Testing, one, two, three, action. So you just decided that you want to record a cover song. Maybe you're kind of lost and you don't really know where to start. You clicked on the right video. There's a lot of information out there. And I know when I first got started, a lot of it seemed really confusing to me. I've made over 40 cover videos on my channel now. And I think I've got a pretty good idea on what to do to make a good cover. So let's go through the checklist. These are three things to know when you record a cover song. Choose the correct song for you. Now this may seem very obvious, right? But choosing a song that fits your vocal range and your musical style and skill set is really important. Let me give you a really good example. So I love the band Queen, but I'm no Freddie Mercury. And that's totally okay, I know that. I don't have that sort of vocal range. What I do have is a voice maybe similar to singers like Josh Homme or Courtney Love, Billy Corgan. I know I can play these songs with confidence and pull it off with my range. So first thing on the list, make sure that you choose a song that you can play and sing with confidence. Great, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's move on to thing number two on our checklist, which is recording equipment. You're going to need a microphone to record yourself. You could either opt to use a USB microphone, like for example the Blue Yeti mic. That's what I started doing my covers with. It's a simple setup, you just plug it into your computer, hit record, and it records you. Or you could opt for better sound quality for an XLR microphone. Like for example the AT2035, this is what I use now. It's got better sound quality, but you're going to need an audio interface to plug it into your computer. Both options are totally fine, but I just want to share a piece of advice with you. If you want to record yourself using two microphones, use either two USB mics or two XLR mics. Trust me, you're going to save yourself a lot of headache down the road following this advice. If you're using an XLR mic, you're going to need an audio interface and an XLR cable. So put simply, an audio interface converts your microphone and instrument signals into a format that your computer and software recognizes. You connect your microphone and interface with an XLR cable, and your interface connects to the computer via Thunderbolt or USB. I recommend that you get an interface that has at least two inputs, like this one, this is the PreSonus AudioBox 96. It's got two simple inputs, does the job for what I need. Also, if you're recording a cover, I'm assuming that you're gonna to wanna to put it out there online, maybe on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram. And for that, you're gonna need a camera. Nowadays, you could easily record yourself using a modern smartphone. But if you want to elevate the quality of your footage, maybe investing in an entry-level DLSR, DSLR, <laughs> DLSR, DSLR camera or mirrorless camera could be a good investment. High quality audio is much more important than high quality video, especially for music related content. If your budget is limited, spend it first on good audio recording equipment. So I'm filming this video with my four year old smartphone, um, but I'm using a proper mic so the, the sound quality is much better. So I'm filming this with my mirrorless camera with a good prime lens, but I'm just using the sounds getting picked up from the camera. I'm not using any external audio. As you can see, the audio quality is not so great. That was a lot of info. So now that we've got all of that techie stuff out of the way, let's move on to thing number three, which is the funnest part, recording. You're going to need a DAW, so a digital audio workstation. This is a musical software that will allow what you record through your microphone and interface to translate into your computer. There's a lot of good options for DAWs out there. I use GarageBand, which was free with my Mac computer, but there's tons of free options even for PC like Reaper and Audacity. Also, Studio One is a DAW that came with my PreSonus interface, which I think most interfaces come with a DAW these days. If you choose to do a live version, make sure that you know the song very, very well before pressing record. I've been guilty of doing this myself, where I was too excited to get the cover out there and started recording it before I was even really ready. I found myself having to scrap a couple times some covers that I've done only to start over a few days later because I didn't properly put in the time to learning it in the first place. 
It's a very good idea to clap before each take that you do. This way you can easily see the audio spikes in both of your audio and visual recording and you can synchronize them in post-production. Okay, so when you first open up GarageBand, you're gonna choose an empty project. First thing you're gonna do is your interface is gonna be recognized as two inputs, so input one, I suggest that you put your voice in there. So input one, my microphone right here is plugged to my first input uh, in my interface. And then I'm gonna go right away, new track. I'm gonna plug my electric guitar uh, in input two. Gonna take off this effect because I don't want it. Uh, right click, first thing to do, configure track header, record enabled, and you're gonna click the red button, the record button for both of your tracks. Um, and then you're gonna start recording. If GarageBand doesn't recognize your interface, you can always go up to GarageBand, settings, uh, and then click on audio and MIDI and see where the problem is here. Sometimes your MacBook Pro speakers are, gonna go, are going to take over. Um, and I found what helps is just to unplug my like, little dangle connect connection from my USB ports um, from my computer and then just replug it afterwards. Um, and usually it recognizes my interface after that. So, I'm gonna take off the metronome, the count in, and I'm gonna sing a song. song for you to I don't really know what I'm saying cause I'm going on the fly these are the chords from another song I wrote a few months ago I'm writing a song for you to YouTube and there you go that's how you record in GarageBand. And that is it guys. Thank you for sticking around until the end of the video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I make sure to answer every single comment that's left on my videos. And lastly, if you enjoyed the content that I've given you today, please consider subscribing and liking the video. It really helps me out and allows me to continue making videos for you guys. So cheers, have a good day and see you later.